Welcome to RaceFace TV and this episode of RaceFace Driver Updates. We had a busy weekend for both the RaceFace drivers and the RaceFace Next drivers. Let's start off with the NASCAR k and Pro Series action at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. This was the second to the last k and race of the year and it took place on Saturday with the running of the Apple Barrel 125. Let's start off with NASCAR Next driver Ryan Vargas who started 14th and showed good speed early in the race, climbing inside the top 10 with his number two Rev Racing NASCAR Technical Institute entry. But a brush with another competitor caused him to spin and lose a lap to the leaders. He finished 14th. Ryan set sixth in points heading to Dover. Series rookie Anthony Alfredo was behind the wheel of his number 40 Seco Building Systems Toyota. He charged inside the top five early in the event, running as high as third. The NASCAR next driver stayed among the top five all race long until contact from another car caused him to fall back on a late race restart with just 35 laps left. Anthony rebounded to a sixth place finish. He currently sets fourth in points, heading into the last race of the season at Dover International Speedway on October the 5th. Alfredo's MDM Motorsports teammate for the weekend was 15-year-old rookie Sam Mayer driving his Menards Toyota. Sam is known for how quickly he adapts to new situations. He drove a smooth and steady race to run in the top 10 by the end of the first stage. Running eighth on the final lap, Sam was outside of a competitor racing for a position when the other car drove him up and squeezed him into the wall. Sam still crossed the finish line in 10th place with a flat tire and significant damage to the car. Up next for Sam, NASCAR Wheelin' All-American Series at Martinsville Speedway this Saturday and the Valley Star Credit Union 300. Speaking of Martinsville, race face driver Minnie Tyrell will be making his debut in his number 81 Tire X Chevrolet, also running in the Valley Star Credit Union 300. The 14-year-old from Manassas, Virginia will take on some of the top late model racers in the country, all competing for that top prize of $25,000, plus the coolest trophy in racing, the historic grandfather clock. Let's now head out west to California's Madeira Speedway. We find Jesse Love, who was pulling double duty in both the 5150 Junior late model and the RPM Mortgage Pro Late Model. Now Jesse started on the pole in the Pro Late Model race and was running strong when he lost his brakes on his number 38 5150 Home Smiles Nate Clower Motorsports entry, causing him to pull out of the race, ending in a DNF. In the Junior Late Model division, Jesse led most of the events until contact forced him into the wall. He was able to keep going and rebounded for a third place finish. Adam Lemke also competed in the Pro Late Model Division, but had engine issues early on, but was able to qualify 12th. However, those mechanical issues with the engine prohibited him from starting the race. Let's now move on to race face next driver Joey East, who was racing in the Junior Late Model Division at Madera Speedway, qualifying 4th and starting on the pole. The mechanical gremlin got his machine as well, and he was unable to finish the event. Race Face Next drivers Colby and Justice Sokol had a great two days of racing at the Pikes Peak Quarter Midget Association Rock and Rumble. Justin finished third in Combined 160, second in Heavy Honda, and third in World Formula. Now Sunday was an SCS point race, and Justice visited Victory Lane by winning the Heavy Honda, finished second in Heavy World Formula, and third in Unrestricted Animal. Brother Colby won Senior Animal, Combined World Formula, and finished second in Combined 160 on Saturday. Sunday in the SCS points race, Colby won both Senior Honda and Senior Animal, but also finished second in Light 160 and fourth in Light World Formula. Last but surely not least, Minnesota's Joe Valento made his legend car debut at Elko Speedway on Saturday. The rising Midwest racer qualified P20 
and finished the feature in 17th place. In the second feature, Joe started 18th and finished in 19th. The main thing is Joe ran all the laps and not a scratch on the car. This was awesome for his first time out with the pros and only the third time behind the wheel, including two test dates. Well, that's it for this weekend's driver updates. Make sure to catch up on any shows that you might have missed at raceface.tv on demand. Remember that in addition to our own unique shows, we offer the Dale Jr. Download from Dirty Mo Media and both the Stock Car Show and Motorsports Madness from Race Chaser Media. Please make sure to like our page at facebook.com forward slash raceface TV. As always, we encourage you to support local racing in your community, and we'll see you back here next week with more driver updates from your favorite race face drivers.